this video is aimed at teaching you guys what a random forest algorithm is and why is it so popular to start off uh, as i have already discussed in my previous video regarding how a decision tree functions inherently a decision tree is an algorithm with high variance and low bias don't be scared by the terms variance and bias bias is basically the amount by which the expected model prediction differs from true value of your target variable in simple terms if you have your output true value of your output variable as 0.8 and your uh, actual prediction value comes out to be 0.5 then your bias there is 0.3 this is for just one data point if you add up all the terms you get a cumulative bias of your model so bias is basically the error term variance is the amount by which your model would change if you estimated the same model using a different data set so if we split the data that we have in a decision tree in two halves at random and fit a decision tree the results would be really different for both the decision trees and that is why it has a very high variance and a low bias to overcome this inherent problem of a decision tree we use something called as bagging trees now what a bagging tree is basically reducing the variance of your model uh, in simple terms it averages out so you uh, grow multiple trees and you randomly select the samples of your model so if i have 1000 training data points and if i grow five uh, trees for example then i can have uh, i choose uh, 200 samples at random for fitting the same bag tree here the catch is i am using all the m features that are there for making a prediction now if i have 10 features to make a prediction I'm using all 10 features to make a prediction, but my randomization is happening at the sample level and not at the feature level. So I hopefully uh, it does give a better result, but it still has some problem. So why do bagging trees fail? Now, uh, say for example, if you're predicting an accident prone area in a country, which is your target variable. So a feature like metros. Uh, where the city is located is uh, a very strong predictor now if you have a very strong predictor in your model which kind of uh, has a bigger say in your model prediction that is the time your bagging tree would uh, fail miserably because all the decision trees you grow even though they are from different uh, samples that you have considered would be really giving out the same output they will be heavily correlated so although the uh, variance is kind of uh, reduced but then uh, what the problem would still be is uh, you will have highly correlated trees in order to uh, avoid this there's something called as random forest so how does a random forest work again you're bootstrapping the samples bootstrapping is again randomly picking up samples with replacement now the catch here is at every decision tree that you grow you basically choose root of m features so if i start off with 13 features and for one decision tree i'll choose root of 13 which is approximately 3 point something or if you round it out you will have four features so there are so the decision trees that you grow in a random forest are highly decorrelated because not every time will you pick the predictors with the maximum prediction so you will have an un unbiased uh, estimate out of your random forest uh, model that comes out so that is why uh, in a bag tree you have correlated trees whereas in your random forest uh, you have decorrelated trees plus you have uh, lowered the uh, variance of your model as well now how do you choose the number of trees in a random forest now uh, you could say that if you grow like infinite number of trees you will have a better prediction but there is a research paper that i read that uh, analyzed basically 29 data sets uh, using different number of trees say it started off with 128 64 128 256 and so on uh, and what that paper uh, kind of explained is the mean and me uh, median auc values uh, do not present a lot of changes after 64 trees so if you are ever planning to grow decision trees uh, or sorry random forest uh, then the number of decision trees that you can choose or uh, there is a variable called as n jobs in sklearn uh, 
so you can choose that between 64 to 128 beyond that uh, there won't be any significant change of uh, your accuracy or your model prediction so this was a simple introduction without any code regarding how a random forest functions hope you all like the video uh, do like and subscribe the channel and i'll be continuing i'll continue to post videos as we move along thank you so much